Check it out, today I'm bringing you a review of the liquid metallic permanent paint from Montana Colors. SprayPlanet.com sent me over these bottles and empty markers to give a review on their performance. SprayPlanet offers a large selection of MTN and other graffiti supplies, so be sure to check out their site and save 10% on any order with the coupon code SIVEWINS. All that information will be linked in the description of the video. As always, the opinions expressed here are my own, so let's see if these are worth picking up. For starters, let's go over the features of the liquid metallic paint. Each bottle features a metal body and a threaded metal screw top. This metal bottle is required for the highly pigmented solvent-based paint. You don't want to store solvent paints in your typical plastics because actually over time, they'll eat into the material, leaking their precious contents out. Solvent-based paints do, however, have a few things on their side. Because they do have a much lower viscosity, they're able to write a lot smoother on a surface and carry their pigments very well. With a viscosity this low, the ink's going to be super drippy in mops, even without removing the regulator. The liquid metallic paint is available in three colors. These are silver, gold, and copper. I have both the silver and gold here to test. Each bottle contains 200 milliliters of paint and is currently priced at $12.99 on SprayPlanet.com. Now that I have a bunch of these empties filled up, let's give them a try on some painted poster board. I painted the background black to give a strong contrast and to see how the opacity holds up on a dark surface. Immediately the chrome pops off the surface without any hesitation. Being that this is a non-porous surface, the paint is actually able to sit right on top of the board and drip rather freely. I really liked how both the mop and marker glide while writing. It definitely makes for some smooth tags. If you've ever tried a thicker paint in mops, you can sometimes have a hard time getting a smooth line because the nib grabs and gets choppy on the wall. The low viscosity fights against this and is definitely a bonus by making a smooth flow along the board without much notice to the surface underneath. Although there were plenty of drips, they definitely felt controllable and the 90mm nib on the flat surface was definitely going to get some more use in my personal work. You can see it just lays down this perfectly gold and opaque line. Of all the beautiful truths pertaining to the soul which have been restored and brought to light in this age, none is more gladdening or fruitful of divine, of divine power. power. I also wanted to try these mops out on a white base and see if there was any differences. I didn't find anything on the white surface to be upset with, the opacity looked great, although the camera didn't quite pick up the low contrast between the silver and gold. I can assure you that it was maintained all the same as the black background. Moving on to the concrete wall, the paint had a very similar performance as with the boards. I did, however, let these tags drip a whole lot more, and I was really impressed with even after a few feet of drips, they were still running with full opacity. The chemistry that went into these inks has to be pretty top notch if they're able to do this. With cheaper inks, you're going to be able to see an uneven pigment or even some shrieking at the ends of longer drips. This is definitely not the case on the concrete wall. The slightly rougher surface was definitely apparent while writing, but it didn't keep the markers or mops from writing clean. I didn't notice any streaking in the tags themselves either. There was also no visible difference between the ink as I finished the tag and after letting them dry completely. The tag didn't set into the wall or lose any opacity over time. They held strong and looked extremely vibrant. I'm now interested to see if that holds up on a surface like paper that will allow the ink to set in a little bit. <laughs> so first off, I can see that the paint is indeed setting into the paper unlike the painted surface. These effects seem totally manageable with the silver, but the gold saturated the page quite a bit after giving it some time to dry. I somewhat expected this with the really thin nature of the paint. It's also common for metallics to bleed out and saturate a page like this. And in some cases you can kind of see that oil slick residue around the edge of your design even after it dries. Although this bleeding effect is a little undesirable, I wouldn't totally write off the use of these on paper. You may just be a little bit more limited on how clean your lines will be on paper.
Now taking these paints to a piece of sheet metal proved to be rather interesting. I can honestly say I've never seen this effect happen so drastically with a set of paints. The surface of the sheet metal seemed to be so slick that the ink just ran down the sheet not having anything to grab onto and barely leaving a visible tag. The pigment particles seem to just get carried down with each of the drips, which is a little bit backwards from how great that same thing performed on the wall. I only was able to catch the paint by turning the sheet upright. In testing how it would work without gravity taking that effect, I laid it down and did some tags. Both the silver and gold were at least able to write on the sheet now, but I wouldn't say it was perfect. These paints are definitely not going to be best suited on untreated metal. They need a little bit more to hold on to. The paint worked much the same on a painted wood panel. The drips were a little shorter than with the smooth surface, but that should be expected here. A quick note about the nibs is they did not degrade much after using them on the coarser wood. These nibs are pretty typical to what I've seen in the past from empty mops, so they don't strike me as perfectly strong, so they could be worn down much faster on something like bare brick. That being said, there were no complaints about using them with all the surfaces here. Anything with a mildly smooth surface shouldn't hurt them much at all. Now the question always comes to, who are these inks and mops for? I would consider these inks almost working flawlessly on a painted and dark surface. Untreated metal allowed for the thin formula to drip way too much, but I imagine a painted metal surface like a post box would support the inks just the same as the painted smooth board. The inks needed a little something to grab onto to set those pigments down. The opacity on these inks is totally solid on the black background. Both the wood and the concrete held up great and the metallics had some awesome contrast off the surface. The paint was not totally resilient to buff. After just one coat, it was pretty much covered up, leading me to push these maybe to more of my own studio style use. The pigments definitely seem rated to survive outside, so who knows how I might incorporate them into some different murals or whatnot. With these metallic pigments being honestly the brightest I've ever seen, I can't wait to use them as some accent color styles in a future piece. So long as the surface is primed up with some paint, I don't see any problem using these on canvas or wood panel. As I mentioned earlier, these inks are not recommended to be used with plastic bodied supplies, and clearly the manufacturers have stored them in a metal bottle. This recommendation generally comes from the ingredients of the ink being aggressive towards plastic and eating into it over time. My personal experience here has led to four months with no broken mops or markers, however. I left my extra ink in here after filming the original video, and I really haven't seen any issues in the plastics yet. You should always take the manufacturer's suggestion with how to handle the product. I would definitely recommend storing the ink in the metal bottle, but using them in the plastic marker bodies and mops proved to be totally just fine. Once again, I have no fear in saying these are the shiniest chromes I've ever worked with, and I'm interested to leverage that in some of my future work. If you've used the supplies and you think I missed something or have suggestions for future reviews, please don't hesitate to leave a comment down below so other artists or I can get back to you. I would love to hear if anybody else has used these so far as I haven't seen too much online about them. SprayPlanet.com supplied the liquid metallics for this video, so be sure to follow the links in the description to check them out, as well as all the other great MTM supplies they offer. Be sure to save that 10% on your order when you use the code SIVEWINS at checkout. You can't go wrong with saving some cash on my behalf, as well as supporting the channel a little bit. If you enjoyed the review, go ahead and spray that like button. I also post tutorials, speed arts, and reviews like this, so consider subscribing if you want to join the crew. That's going to do it for me, guys. Peace.